Across the internet, I have seen a lot of complaints about Regulation C being a very stale meta. In particular, a lot of complaints about power and balance teams kind of being everywhere, and how that is somehow the peak meta for Regulation C to the point where power balance is about the only team you see just anywhere. And to some extent that was kind of the case, but I would like to turn your attention to the 2023 Portland Regionals Championship that happened just a few days ago. And I will just go ahead and spoil the main topic here. Of all the 41 teams that made it to day two, only four of them even featured Palafin. And not all of those teams featuring Palafin were actually the Pal Balance core to begin with. So I wanna go over the teams that showed up in day two. And we'll take a look at what actually might be kind of stale in the meta, as well as what isn't stale about this meta. So of those four teams featuring Palafin in Day 2, the one that ranked lowest, which was rank 25, is not a Pal Balance team in the slightest, and even features some very odd picks such as Halucha, as well as Sandy Shocks, two Pokemon that you generally don't see at all. And if we actually take a look at that Palafin, it is eject pack with close combat. So it's not even the standard Pal Balance build for Palafin to begin with. The next Palafin team we see managed to get rank 9, and it is a pretty standard Pal Balance team. And the other two Palafin teams that made it were also pretty standard Pal Balance, but they placed 8th and 7th respectively. Which is interesting because this was considered the meta type of team and there were only four represented in day two which is about a 10% utilization which is really quite low and is pretty close to that of an off meta pick rate which is kind of a surprise to see and the highest that Palabounce managed to get was seventh meaning that there were six other teams that performed better than what was considered at one point to be the meta team. So let's take a look at those top six teams. So rank number six, we can see a Sand Core with Corviknight and Garchomp as well. Rank number five has Screamtail and Annihilate without Mouse Hold. Rank number four has Obama Snow and pretty standard outside of that. Rank number three features Murkrow and Gyarados, two Pokemon that you do not see that often in tournament play. Second place was a Dozer team, which Dozer's always going to be good, it seems. And what actually won is a Sun Core with Hyper Offense. So if we look at these teams here, there's actually a decent amount of variety, although there are still some things that are quite common. If you want to talk about something that is stale, the use of Fluttermane is probably the most stale thing about this meta, because 28 of the 41 teams that made it to day 2 feature a Fluttermane, and every team in top 8 features a Fluttermane. <laughs> It's the only Pokemon that is in every team in top eight. And while the movesets do actually have some variety in them, it is very plain to see that if you do want to make a peak meta team, you most likely do want to feature Fluttermane. Now, if we look at top four specifically, three of the four teams feature Great Tusk. So it kind of looks like the way the meta works right now. Great Tusk and Fluttermane act as your primary offense and are probably the best Pokemon to guarantee really good physical and special type offense. And I believe most of these Great Tusks are Choice Scarf and Fluttermane is primarily Choice Specs. And while a lot of these Pokemon are still Pokemon that are considered to be really strong or high slash top tier, there are a few that are just really odd that did actually show up, such as Obama Snow. That is not a Pokemon that's considered to be particularly good. Same with Screamtail, as well as Lycanroc. Even Pokemon like Armorog are really not that great in this current meta. There was a Scizor present. Some of the Palabalance cores were adapted to feature Azumarill instead of Palafin, which I think is quite interesting. Probably the most cookie cutter teams were that of the Dozer teams. Even Pokemon that fell out of the meta, like Farigaraf, kind of showed back up a little bit. There was a Dragapult, 
appear as well. Of course, this team. I just, I just love this team. And someone did manage to get top 32 with a Wuchin, which I think is pretty neat because I've always considered Wuchin to be the worst of the Ruinous Legendaries, and by the usage rates, that seems to be the opinion of most people as well. And somehow this team made it just squeezing into top 32, which I find to be a very odd team, because when you see Flamigo in a Don Dozo team, the general understanding is that the Tatsugiri is set up with like a Toxic Orb and is designed to get knocked out as quickly as possible, so that you can have Don Dozo with all of the stat boosts next to Flamigo, which will get those boosts thanks to CoStar. But this team does not actually feature that. It's instead a much more normal Sash Tatsugiri. And while not necessarily a mediocre Pokemon, Nebuchadnezzar is not very common, and one of them did actually show up in Day 2. So there definitely are some aspects of this current meta that is kind of stale, Flutterbane being really the main stale component of this meta. There was still a fair amount of variety, and you could even get pretty far with some relatively mediocre Pokemon like Obama Snow and Flamigo, and a team that almost made it to day two, but lost its last fight in day one, featured a Reverum. So it is entirely possible to get really far at an official tournament using some really weird stuff. And this is open team sheet. Your opponent knows what your stuff does. Yet even in that environment, you can still get away with some really interesting teams. And even what actually made it to top eight is so much different than how past tournaments have been, where you're just looking at two Palafin teams in the finals. Even though this tournament did actually have Palafin teams, they just didn't get nearly as far as they used to be able to get. So where did that whole idea of Palafin balance stale meta show up? And for that, we're going to have to go to the Europe International that happened in March, where first and second place is Palabalance. And this top 8 did also feature two other Palafin teams. Just scrolling through the teams here, you can see somehow a lot less variety. Like, there's still Screamtail, and there's Alberto's Klefki Corviknight Core, and even an Orthworm did actually show up in day 2. But the team variety is actually considerably less, as there are actually a lot of Palafin teams in here, and the other common core was that of dozer teams. So this is kind of where the lack of variety showed up, where there are palafin teams all throughout this. Although I didn't actually realize there was an iron jugulus that showed up there. That's neat. So it was this lack of variety that showed up at this particular tournament, this being an international, it's a pretty big tournament, that started the idea of, oh, well, I guess Pala Balance is how you actually win the Vigi game. And while initially, you could definitely look at that and say, oh, yeah, the meta is definitely stale. Look at all of these Powell Balance teams. They started to die off after a while, which, as we saw in the more recent tournament, there were only four that made it to day two versus this tournament where about half the teams were Powell Balance teams. That's quite a steep fall off of something that is breaking the meta and making the game not fun anymore. So what we're seeing here is the adaptation of players, but also just the sheer amount of options that exist in this game that actually make it quite difficult to run the same team every tournament. And you can see a lot of these really high level players, they tend to show up with a new team just about every tournament because there's so many options and flexibility of teams as well as counters that you can just bake into pretty much any Pokemon you want thanks to the Terrastalize gimmick that makes this game's meta very interesting and kind of unpredictable because Pokemon that are super popular become off-meta picks in just a matter of a few weeks. And typically, the ranked ladder tends to reflect what does well at the most recent VGC tournament. So I suspect that ranked ladder is going to start seeing a considerable decline in power balance teams. And it's this dynamic of how 
much fluctuation that there currently is and what's working right now versus what's working like a month later that really makes it hard for this meta to become stale. It can get stale based on tournament results, but that staleness doesn't actually last that long. And for that reason, it's not like a truly stale meta where, oh, everyone just uses power balance and it's impossible to beat even in tournaments. That's not the case at all. So while I do understand the frustration behind having to fight the same team over and over on the ranked ladder for a short period, this game is complex enough and diverse enough that it's only for a short while that such a staleness can be maintained. And tournament results prove that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time.